Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. St. John's is starting 2024 with a full calendar in January. Here are some upcoming events. The monthly preachers meeting will be on January 13th at 10 a.m. MLK Junior Day of Service will be on January 15th. The next Senior Ministries Lunch and Learn will be on Wednesday, January 17th at 11 a.m. St. John's Annual Church Meeting will be on Thursday, January 18th at 7 p.m. Meeting with all youth leaders and parent advisors will be on Friday, January 19th at 7 p.m. General Baptist Convention of New Jersey Virtual Leaders Workers Conference will be on Saturday, January 27th. Game night returns on Saturday, January 27th at 3 p.m. Installation of St. John's officers will be on Sunday, January 28th during morning worship. St. John's Men's Fellowship will host our annual Super Bowl Fellowship on Sunday, February 11th. Bring your family and friends to enjoy an evening of great food, fun, fellowship, and door prizes. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to wear your favorite NFL team jersey. Tickets can be purchased in the Fellowship Hall after service. Due to the recent uptick in new strain of COVID-19, we ask that when we gather here at the church to please wear a mask. If you do not have a mask, we will have masks available upon entry into the church building. We thank you for your cooperation. As we pray for our bereaved members and families, let us also keep in prayer the sick and the shut-in. Join us every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday School. Let us gather and study the Word together. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Bible study. We will continue this lively discussion by Zoom, so be sure to have signed up to receive our emails so you are added to the weekly invite. Are you on the call? Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312-522. If you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www. St. John's Scotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is doing Sunday morning worship, online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, or mail to the church. We are grateful for your giving. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day.
We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Songwriter said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Yeah. Amen. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, he brought us safe thus far. Amen. We got good snow that we haven't gotten in it. It looks like a couple years now, but thank God for your presence and thank God for each and every one of you that come to join with us today. We've got five candidates to baptize Amen. today. Somebody want to give God praise just for that. Amen. Five young people that are going into the water today and we are grateful. That means that the church is growing. That means that the church is still here and that the church is still has a work to do and that God continues to add to the church daily as he sees fit. So we're grateful for this opportunity to come and to be a blessing um, in this uh, observation of baptism. Can I tell y'all, we do not get baptized to get saved, but we are baptized because we are saved. Amen. After we have made that commitment to Jesus Christ, it's an opportunity for us to come together and say, hey, I'm a part of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we're here today to baptize and we thank God for each and every one of you that join us here this morning. Take me to the water. Take me to the water.
Continue to hold all of these young people up in prayer. Oh, yes. That we will be there for them, God, whenever they need. Yes. That we will help to support and guide them on this Christian journey. Yes. Lord, we realize that every day will not be an easy day. We realize, God, that every time they will not make all the best decisions. But, God, we know that you've got them in the hollow of your hand. Yes. God, we know that you have blessed them, God, and you have uh, given them the unction to come and give their life to you. So, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for how you have blessed us. And we will give you glory. Yes. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Jesus. Let every heart say, Amen. Yes. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Sing glory, hallelujah. I've been the time. I've been. Baptism. Yeah, New souls, we should celebrate. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of more soprano oh, oh. 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 let it ride let it ride hey let's say it again let the glory of the lord let, let the glory of the lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praise Let the praises of our King rise, rise among us. Let it rise. We say, oh, 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 let it rise. We say, oh, 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 let it rise. Let it rise. Let the sun. 
Let the joy of our King, let the joy of our King, let it rise among us, let it rise. Say it, let the song of, let the song of our Lord rise among us, let the, let the songs of our Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise.
Let's go back for this song. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Happiness is mine. Happiness today is mine. I told, I told Satan, get me behind. Happiness today is mine. Listen, oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say it all you have to flee. Oh, oh, oh. Tell me who can stand me for us when we call on the great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, in the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, it is in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that I will have to flee. Oh, 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 tell me who can stand me for us when we call on. The blood. Yeah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Come on. I know it was. I know it was the blood. I know. 
I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Come on. I know, I know it was the blood. He's coming, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Come on, I know, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Praise him. And the people of God said amen, 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 amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Songwriter Praise said, I was glad when they said unto me, yeah. let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you. It's just good to be here. Amen. I know it's snowing outside, but I thank God that we're still alive, amen, amen, and able to come and worship God in spirit and in truth. God, again, we're grateful. We thank you for another day's journey that you have brought us. Lord, you've been mighty good to us. Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't tell it all. So, God, we say thank you. Thank you, God, that you've allowed us to come to your house of worship. Thank you for safe traveling mercy. Thank you that you allowed us to come in to lift up holy hands and to glorify and magnify your holy name. God, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all that you will do in this place. And God, we're grateful, Lord, for all of the candidates that went down for baptism today. God, again, we say thank you. Thank you that you're still adding to the church as you see fit. And God, we'll give you glory. We'll give you praise and we'll give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. Our morning scripture comes from the gospels recorded by Matthew. Uh, chapter 16, beginning with verse 24, 16, 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man or a woman if he or she gains the whole world and forfeits their soul? Or what shall a man or a woman give in return for their soul? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm warning him, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Oh, Lord, my God. 
With shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy fell to my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. St. John's is starting 2024 with a full calendar in January. Here are some upcoming events. The monthly preachers meeting will be on January 13th at 10 a.m. MLK Junior Day of Service will be on January 15th. The next Senior Ministries Lunch and Learn will be on Wednesday, January 17th at 11 a.m. St. John's annual church meeting will be on Thursday January 18th at 7 p.m. Meeting with all youth leaders and parent advisors will be on Friday, January 19th at 7 p.m. General Baptist Convention of New Jersey Virtual Leaders Workers Conference will be on Saturday, January 27th. Game night returns on Saturday, January 27th at 3 p.m. Installation of St. John's officers will be on Sunday, January 28th during morning worship. St. John's Men's Fellowship will host our annual Super Bowl Fellowship on Sunday, February 11th. Bring your family and friends to enjoy an evening of great food, fun, fellowship, and door prizes. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to wear your favorite NFL team jersey. Tickets can be purchased in the Fellowship Hall after service. Due to the recent uptick and new strain of COVID-19, we ask that when we gather here at the church to please wear a mask. If you do not have a mask, we will have masks available upon entry into the church building. We thank you for your cooperation. As we pray for our bereaved members and families, let us also keep in prayer the sick and the shut-in.
Amen. And the people of God said amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. One more time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, please bear all of our announcements in mind. Again, um, we can always look back at the recording to, to see our announcements. We can always call into the church to see the announcements. Amen. Uh, prayerfully, we'll put them up on the website to see the announcements. But stay informed. Amen. Stay informed. And when you come into the church business meeting on the 18th, we'll make sure everybody has a copy of the yearly announcements. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 So we don't want to hear, Pastor, we didn't know that such and such was going to happen. I said, well, I gave out all the year calendar. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, now, I know I know this has to be um, the, the worshiping crowd. If this this got to be the worshiping crowd. Because I know the folks that didn't really want to worship, they stayed home. Amen. So if you pressed your way to come out this morning, I know y'all came to give God some glory and to give God some praise. Amen. For he's worthy to be praised. Because we could have stayed home. Amen. But thanks be to God Woo, for giving us the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Again, please keep all of those announcements in mind. We thank you uh, for governing yourselves accordingly. Uh, let me uh, let me say um, happy birthday to all of those born in the month of January. I believe this is our first opportunity to acknowledge all the January babies. If you were born in the month of January, look, they look, 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 they're jumping up, jumping up. January babies, please stand. Amen. Amen. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them, 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 amen, amen. Come on, we might as well sing, we might as well sing for all the January babies, amen. All right, January, let's do it. Happy birthday to me, to me, happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. That, that sounds like the birthday song at one of these restaurants. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. I thought about being at the hibachi place with a happy birthday. Okay, I'm sorry. Woo! Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to all the folks born in the month of January. Or uh, by chance, are there any visitors with us this morning? If you're here, would you just please stand? We just want to acknowledge your presence and thank God that you're here with us and press your way out on a snowy Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God for your presence. Amen. Thank God for allowing the Lord to send you this way. We're grateful that you came to share and worship with us. If you're in the location, in this area again, we pray that you come and join us here at St. John's. Amen. Where we believe that the Lord is in the building. Amen. And is moving us to higher heights and deeper depths. So again, thank you for your presence. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to uh, go to the throne of mercy and grace, um, it is with sadness that we, um, we have to announce two things. Number one, uh, the passing of Sister Juanita Nelson. Amen. Her, um, her funeral will be on Tuesday. Amen. Here at the church, uh, 10 a.m. is the wake and 11 a.m. is the funeral. If you can and if you will, we ask that you come um, and be a part of us celebrating with that family um, her going home celebration. It is also with sadness that I have to announce uh, the passing of Sister Cora Lagan. Amen. She went on to be with the Lord. Amen. And we are praying certainly for her family um, and we're praying for our family. Amen. Um, as we are going through that and when um, arrangements and things happen, have been made available, I will certainly make sure that everyone knows um, exactly what is going on. Amen? Amen? Amen. It is prayer time. If you desire prayer, we ask that you stand on your feet, and if you so desire, you can make your way to the altar. Amen. We believe that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think according to the power that's at work inside of us. Amen. Amen. T uh, Deacon Anthony Gray is coming to lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. At this time. Good morning, church. 
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be in the house of the Lord one more time, Lord. Father God, you've brought us into a new year. You brought it from 20, 2023 to 2024, and this is the first Sunday of this year. Lord, we ask that you continue to keep watching over us and blessing us and carrying, carrying us through the year, giving us wisdom and knowledge to continue what we do on our daily day, daily to day, day uh, work as we go through doing everything that we do, Lord. We know it's you that carries us through, Lord. Father God, we're sad to hear about our passing of our, our church members, Sister Lagan and Sister Nelson. We ask that you continue to hold their families up. Lord, I had a, a passing in my family, my cousin's wife. We ask that you continue to hold up uh, my cousin Jerry, the Roberts family. Give them all what they need to get through and get through this, this, this difficult time, Lord. Let them know that you, you're not leaving them, you're with them, but it's just a process in life that we have to go through, Lord. We, as our earthly life here, we, we try to understand and we tend to get upset during the passing, but we got to know it's your will and your way, and we will meet our, our family members again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the, the baptism this morning of the youth, the, the four members, the young, the young children that were baptized this morning, Lord. We, we thank you for them. We ask that you continue to watch over them through their lives and give them what they need and lead them in the Lord of our Christ. Father God, as we go through our daily, daily, our daily things that we do each and every day, we ask that you just continue to bless over us. We know that it's a difficult world out here that we have to deal with, Lord. We're not perfect. We tend to stray. We tend to say things, think things. But Lord, just continue to let us know that you are there with us and we will be right and to continue to walk in your path. Father God, we ask that you touch our pastor as he goes through his daily, daily duties. We know it's a difficult job but continue to strengthen him and his family as they do what they do to continue to, to lead us on the righteous path. Lord, we ask that those who are traveling out here today, going to and from, trying to get here, those who just decided to stay home and go to the grocery store, just continue to bless them and keep them away from the harm and dangers that are out on the road. Just bless them, Lord. Lord, and as we continue to go through this year, just continue to give us the wisdom to get through one day at a time. Lord, we ask these blessings and all blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And thank God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercies. For your mercy never fails me. All my days. 
all my day. I've been held. I've been held in your hand. From the moment. From, from the, the moment that I wake, I wake up. Until. Until I lay my head. Oh, oh I will sing of the goodness of God. Say it again. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails. For your mercy never fails me. All my day. All my day. I've been held. I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay. Of the goodness of God. Cause all my life, cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath, and every I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night. In, in darkest, darkest night. You are close like no other. You are close like no other. For I've known you as a father. I've known, known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Let's say it. Cause all my life, oh, all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. that part. Let's sing it. Cause all my life, yeah. all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you've been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. Oh, see, we'll never pray. Every breath that I am able. Come on. Every breath I'm able. Oh, I will sing. I'm gonna sing. Good. Come on, Soprano. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life. With my life. Lay down. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness. Your Your goodness, your goodness is running after. 
people of God said amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. And I just want to say thank you, Lord. I like this verse. You made a way. You made a way. Lord, you made a way. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank 
thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God, we're thankful and grateful for this day. Whew. Lord, you made a way out of no way. And Lord, our testimony today is that all of our life, you've been faithful. Even when we were unfaithful, Lord, you've been faithful. Even when we did what was wrong, you've been faithful. Even when we didn't know what to do, you have always been faithful. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew's gospel, the gospel recorded by Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, amen, beginning with verse 35, Matthew 9, beginning with verse 35, and Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless. King James says they were scattered abroad like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk from this thought this morning. Help wanted, ministry needed. Help wanted, ministry needed needed. The word advertisement comes from an old French word meaning to notice. At the core of every job ad, an advertisement attempts to make the right candidate notice a particular job opening. The first job advertisements were simply sheets of paper tacked to community bulletin boards or stuck in an employer's window. This was somewhat inefficient as limited candidates responded to those, um, those uh, bulletins that were either in a window or on a tree somewhere. When newspapers became dominant communication tools during the 19th century, they began publishing help wanted ads. This was a distinct improvement over previous methods. The employer could reach many more potential clients, excuse me, candidates over a wider geographic area. But newspaper ads were expensive and strictly one way in their communication format. Many of the more seasoned saints probably remember and could talk about help wanted ads in the newspaper. A help wanted ad provided job seekers with important information, including company descriptions, job title descriptions, requirements, preferences, benefits, pay ranges, and application resources. In the mid-1990s, a new way to reach candidates appeared called a job board. Y'all praying with me this morning? A job board is an online platform where employers list job vacancies and job seekers apply for those positions. 
Those help wanted ads moved online and became a popular way to reach candidates almost overnight. For job seekers, the new online tools meant that for the first time, they could be, uh, see thousands of job openings from locations around the world. Preacher, what are you talking about? Sisters and brothers, I've come on the first Sunday of the new year 2024 with an advertisement. I'm hoping that the right candidates take notice. I'm hoping that the announcement has mass appeal. I'm hoping that job seekers locally and even abroad see this particular job vacancy and respond by applying for the position. Because the members of the body of Christ need to hear and need to know that help is wanted and ministry is needed. For the Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So in light of there being much work, but few workers, I came to make this announcement and to share and to appeal, help wanted, ministry needed. How do you know, preacher? I'll tell you, because in a world that lacks love and is full of hate, a world that promotes war and ignores peace. A world that overlooks wrong and refuses to do that which is right. Deliberate ministry is needed. In a society where sin is ever abounding and grace is taken for granted, where Jesus is no longer our choice because we can create our own options, where people are lost and have no place to turn, ministry is needed. In this country that can afford to rebuild other countries and stick their nose in everybody else's affairs, yet allows hundreds of thousands of people to suffer from homelessness and joblessness and malnutrition. In this country that claims to be the land of the free, but perpetuates an unjustice legal system that criminalizes people for standing up for their own rights while legitimizing the actions of a former president whose every thought, every word, and every action is wrong, ministry is needed. When people no longer value life, when morals and values and self-respect have taken a back seat, when a handicapped man can't even sit in his own chair in the handicapped section of the movie theater, ministry is needed. When there's more of the world in church than there is church in the world. When people would rather compromise their stand in Christ in order to be accepted by the greater society. When people are more interested in seeing the downfall of religious leaders than they are of the uplifting of the resurrected Savior, deliberate ministry is needed. Don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel, y'all, simple, full, and free. Prove him, and you'll find his word is true, his promise is true. I'll draw all men unto on Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other ground, sinking sand, help wanted, ministry I brought all the amens I need with me today. And I'm wondering if there's anybody other than me that sees these problems. Is there anyone who is clear about what is really going on? Because the devil is busy and will stop at nothing until he can destroy our lives, destroy our families, 
destroy the moral fabric in our society, destroy our children, destroy our relationships, destroy our churches. For the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And it's not until we see the severity of the situation that we can understand how much help is wanted and ministry is needed. Now imagine seeing all these problems, seeing all these situations, understanding the many burdens. Imagine wanting to do something about it, but feeling like we can only do but so much because we're all by ourselves. It's like seeing a need for something, wanting to meet the need, but feeling like we're the only ones that are ready and willing to do something about it. Imagine wanting to make a difference, wanting to help, wanting to make a way, but being limited because we feel like we're all alone. Having to take it on all by ourselves. Having to bear the burden alone. Well, that seems to be where we find our Savior in the text for consideration. You see, most times we see Jesus calm, cool, collected. He seems to always have the answers to each and every problem. Some preachers would have us believe that Jesus only experienced smooth sailing. Some others paint a picture as if he didn't experience any earthly problems or circumstances. But I stop by to tell you and let you know today that ministry costs. And if we take a good look in the Gospels, we'll discover that Jesus cried. Jesus got mad. Jesus was disappointed. Jesus felt abandoned. Jesus uh, experienced the enormity of his responsibility on his life. Life for Jesus was no crystal stair. Life for him wasn't no bowl of cherries and no peaches and cream. In fact, his entire life was a life of struggle. In fact, the essence of his life was one of sacrifice for the cause of ministry. Somebody on the scene or maybe on the screen need to remember today that if we're going to do deliberate ministry for the ministry, it's going to require sacrifice. We got to sacrifice our will. The Bible says, thine kingdom come. Thine will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. It's not about our will, but God's will that needs to be done. <sighs> Can I be honest with y'all today? That's what I've been dealing with lately. Because as I remember and look back for the past three years, at the close of the year and the beginning of the year, people are dying. The past three, y'all walk with me, please. And I said, Lord, when you going to stop? I can't take it anymore. Are y'all with me here? I, Lord, I can't deal with it anymore. Folks in the church passing away. Folks in my family passing away. It seemed like everywhere I turn, somebody is going on to be with the Lord. And Lord, that's not the will that I have or I want. And Jesus lets me know if you're going to be about ministry, it ain't about your will. Oh, somebody hear me today. It's about my will, he says. And then he pushed it a little further and said, you can handle it. Watch this, because my grace. Oh, it's sufficient for you. And my strength is made. My power is made strong while you're weak. We got to learn how to sacrifice our will because, Lord, that ain't what I wanted. But it ain't about what.
what you want. It's about what God will. We, we, we got to sacrifice our way. Um, our way may be a good way, at least in our estimation. But maybe it's not the best way, and we shouldn't be striving for a good way anyway. We should be striving for the God way. All right. We, 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 we got to sacrifice our thought process. We got to make sacrifices with our time, with our talent, with our treasure, with our testimony. Can I tell y'all, deliberate ministry requires sacrifice. The text says that Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and disease among the people. He went preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom. That, that means we can't just come and continue to sit on our blessed assurance. But we need to be doing something for the Lord. I'm, I'm pastoral today. In other words, the focus of deliberate ministry ought to be to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ for the purpose of kingdom building. Not status building. Not membership building, not name building, not even prestige building, but the purpose is for kingdom building. Sadly, um, there are many folks who get into ministry for the wrong reasons. Some get into ministry so they can have a nice title. I'm, I'm trying to get through. Some, some get in because they want the recognition. Some get in because it's the popular thing to do. Others get in to have their name in lights. And when we get into ministry for the wrong reasons, then the ministry becomes ineffective. And it ends up having a negative effect on the understanding of the church. The church is not a social club. The church is not an organization. The church is not a place to go just so you can say you got some religion. But the church it's supposed to be the catalyst for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ for the purpose of kingdom building. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, the church ought to be out in the world tearing Satan's kingdom down. And the promise of the text is that the gates of hell cannot stop the onslaught of the church. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. We, we've, we've read that wrong for years. Gates are not for offense. Check one. Gates are for defense. And if Satan and hell got gates then their gates are to defend against what the church is supposed to be. But the promise is that the gates of hell shall not be able to withstand what the church is supposed to be doing. Church ought to be lifting up Jesus so that souls are saved. So that the power of God can be manifested. So that the ministry of Jesus Christ can be experienced. And watch this, y'all. What goes on in here ought to translate into what we do out there. You see, this place is simply a filling station. 
after having emptied out all week long, we come to this place in order to get filled back. And somebody needs to know that if we come here Sunday after Sunday without having emptied ourselves out during the week, then we may misunderstand our purpose for coming. See, we come to fill up so we can lead to serve. Are y'all with me here? But it seems like the purpose of ministry has been lost. We have reduced ministry to money cometh. Name it and claim it. Everybody is the next millionaire. We've reduced ministry to this is your season. Stand in line for your blessing. I wish. And we're exposed to so much nonsense out here in the name of ministry that it can and it will make us ashamed to even be associated with the church. Sometime when I listen to what I hear these folks talking about, it makes me sad that I'm even associated with something that they call the church. But Paul reminds us that he wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because this is what it is it's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe what should they believe thank you for asking that all have sinned come short of the glory of God and that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. What should they believe? That Christ paid it all. And all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. But he washed us whiter than snow. What should we believe? That there, uh, that there is no other name above heaven whereby men and women can be saved. But at the name What, what should they believe? Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin far away. Rising, he justified. Freeing me forever. And one day, he's coming back. Glorious day. What should we believe? That it's our responsibility to tell a dying world about a living Savior and he's sweet. I know. All right. Deliberate ministry requires sacrifice. Jesus, y'all, didn't sacrifice so he could get a pat on the back or so that someone could say, Good job, Jesus. Jesus didn't sacrifice so he could have the biggest church in Jerusalem. Jesus sacrificed for the sake of kingdom building, and that ought to be why we do what we do. Jesus said, Lord, if it be thy will, hear this, let this bitter cup pass from me. In other words, I'm not doing this because I want to. I'm making this sacrifice because it's according to your will. He said, not my will, but thine will be. Whew. Help wanted. Ministry. <laughs> ministry needed. Deliberate ministry requires sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. sacrifice. And deliberate ministry requires work. Somebody say work. And according to the text, the workers are nowhere <laughs> to be found. Folks want to play church, but don't want to be church because that requires work. 
Folks want to come in and get a blessing, but don't want to go out and be a blessing because that requires work. Folks want to act saved, but don't want to do the work of salvation because that requires Folks want to jump and shout, but nobody wants to go and tell because that requires work. Folks want to make sure that everything is all good for them and don't want to see about somebody else's need because that requires work. Folks are so concerned about the, oh, the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I, that they don't even care to see what somebody else may be going through because that requires Seems like folks are just scared or uninterested or unmotivated or they just don't care to do the work. I know folks want to put their name on the program, but they won't even pass out a pro. I was. F folks want the credit, but they don't want to pay their dues. Folks want to do away with poverty, <laughs> but don't nobody want to help feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give shelter to the homeless. Why? Because all of that requires work. And when Jesus looked out, couldn't find any workers. You see, today's Christians want instant gratification without putting in any work. They want to see with no faith. They want to receive and not give. They want to find without having to seek. They want to have without asking. They want to wear a crown but don't want to bear a cross. They want a blessing but no burden. They want success but no struggle. They want love but they show hate. They want joy, but they don't want to have to cry no times. They want the benefits, but they don't want to work. Look at what the text says. Jesus went teaching and preaching in their synagogues. Y'all hear that? Now, I couldn't help but notice that it said their synagogues. Now, y'all Bible readers, y'all with me, right? And that got to me because Jesus was a Jew. And the synagogue was for. But look, he says he went to their synagogues. In other words, um, Jesus put in the work and went into their territory. He ventured into their neck of the woods. And he held up a standard saying, follow me, and I'll make you a fisher of men. Um, and that, my brothers and sisters, is the work that's required. If they won't come in here, then we got to go out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to build up, fill up, charge up, go out and make disciples and tell somebody of the good news of Jesus Christ. Herein lies the problem that Jesus had, the problem that we still have today. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, the workers are few. Look at Jesus at work in the text, and I'm done. He had recently just healed a crippled man. He called Matthew as a disciple, told him to follow him. He taught and preached in their synagogues. He had healed the woman with the issue of blood and raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He healed two blind men. He healed the man who could not speak. And after doing all that work, he turned, he looked around, and there was still a multitude of scattered sheep without a shepherd. Y'all missed that. Jesus was working, doing what the Father sent him to do. 
And even in spite of all that he did, he turns around and there's still a multitude of people that are like sheep without a shepherd. I wonder if there's anyone other than me that has ever been doing the work of ministry, looked around and felt like you were all by yourself and then felt overwhelmed as a result of it. Well, that's how Jesus felt. But this is what Jesus did. He said, pray. Let me stop right there for a moment. Because oftentimes the last thing we do, I'm taking a while, but it's okay. Oftentimes the last thing we do is pray. <laughs> Instead of the first thing we do is pray. We try to be reactive or we end up being reactive as opposed to being proactive. He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he may send forth some laborers into the harvest. For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And I hear those same words, years, 2,000 of them, down the line. God is saying, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to the one who sends forth the laborers. And ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, <laughs> and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you. Th thank y'all for listening to me this morning. Help wanted. Ministry needed. God sent us pastors after his own heart to be under shepherds of this church. But the laborers are still few. God sent preachers to help share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the laborers are still few. God sent teachers to build up Christian education. But the laborers are still few. God sent some deacons to provide support to church membership. But the laborers are still few. God sent many people to serve in many capacities. But the laborers are still few and I thank my God uh, that the Lord is still sending forth laborers uh, I thank God he's sending people not scared to get their hands dirty for the gospel he's sending people not afraid to be persecuted for righteousness sake he's sending people who fear God more than they fear man He's sending people that'll hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. And wow, God is in the business of sending people. Somebody needs to know that God wants to send you to extra, extra. Read all about it. Help is wanted. Ministry is needed. The kingdom needs your help. The kingdom needs your sacrifice. The kingdom needs you to work. And no work is insignificant. No work is too little. Because everything done for the kingdom is necessary for the growth of the kingdom. You may not preach. You may not teach. But if you can reach out and touch somebody's hand, make this world a better place. If you can, help wanted, ministry needed. If you can just testify, yeah, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch just like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Help wanted, ministry needed. Tell somebody I was sinking deep in sin. I preached to myself far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe, now safe, am I help wanted, ministry needed. Tell somebody that God loves them 
and that he loved them so much he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Help wanting. Ministry needed. Maybe you could just greet somebody in Jesus' name. Tell them that you love them and you're glad they came. Tell them that we can work together in Jesus' name. And then try doing it with a smile. Help wanted. Ministry needed. And here it is, sisters and brothers. When you've been doing any work any length of time, sometimes you may feel like you're the only one that's concerned about doing it. But here's the word of God. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Watch this. And when all of my years come down to one year, and all of my months come down to one month, all my days come on down to one day, all my hours come down to one, all my minutes and seconds and moments come down to one minute, second, and a moment I just want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up so I can make you ruler over many. Help wanted ministry. Thank you. Need it. Everybody standing. Help. See, see, I, I'm cool. I'm cool with people not being excited about that message. I'm cool with that because prayerfully you're convicted about it. Are y'all with me here? You know, sometimes people just stay excited all the time and you wonder sometimes like, hmm. Because when the Lord gave it to me, it didn't excite me. <laughs> so how is it that everybody else is excited? Amen. But we do need to be convicted about the fact that Jesus looks around. And after doing all that he has done, he says there's still so much more to be done. And I need some workers in the vineyard. Sisters and brothers, um, this is an appeal to you today to be a worker in the vineyard here. And, and everybody's work is not the same. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna make that clear. You know, I, I, everybody doesn't need to be at the forefront. Everybody don't need to have their name on, you know. Every, everybody doesn't need to be doing what we consider the popular thing. Are y'all with me here? Because I know some people who have been touched by people who have spoken to them every time they walked into the building. And they can call that person's name before they can even call the preacher's name. Check one, two. Which suggests that everybody has a role to play in ministry. I may preach here till I turn blue. Some folk ain't going, you know, they just ain't going to hear it. But let somebody walk up to them, hear, hear this real good, and give them a hug. And not know what they've been going through. And that hug will touch that individual in a way that even the message may not have penetrated. Are y'all with me here? Because everybody has a work to do. Yeah. And that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wants us all working. Because watch this. This is what we'll discover. I'm really done. Ooh. We'll discover that even with all of us working, we'll still be able to look around. 
and see a multitude of people who are like sheep without a shepherd. Yes. Yes. Can I tell y'all, there are more unchurched people than there are churched people in the church every Sunday morning. I'll say that again, just, just in case nobody got that. There are more unchurched people than there are church people in every church across the country and the world. Are y'all with me here? Every Sunday morning. Yeah, there's more, 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 more folks, more folks not in church than are attached to a church. And here we are fighting over members. Here we are worried about swapping already church folks. Y'all, y'all hear me. When there are millions who don't know. Preacher, how do you know? I'll tell you how I know. Because even in the Gospel of Matthew, it says that when this gospel has been preached to the utmost parts of the world, then the end will come. <laughs> Y'all miss that. Which means that this gospel ain't been everywhere that it's supposed to be yet. Here we are, we concerned about, well, you know, you know, Doc, 25 members from Sanctified Jesus Church came and joined St. John's. What that got to do with anything? They already know the Lord. Check, one, two. Which means that they really should only be coming to get filled up so that we can go out and do the real work. Y'all, 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 y'all. There may be somebody here <laughs> under the sound of my voice, unsaved or unchurched or unsure. You notice that that's always the first, uh, the first uh, question is, are we saved? Because brothers and sisters, there's a whole lot of folk in church that ain't in the Lamb's Book of Life. I ain't, try I ain't trying to get the glory for Jesus to look at me and say, um, uh, depart from me. I know you're not. Well, Jesus, didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I prophesy in you? Lord, I baptized in your name. Depart from me. You know me. Not. That's why we, we got to do deliberate ministry. It's a ministry that impacts the masses. All right, my brothers and sisters, there may be someone here. Uh, after hearing that hard message. That the Lord is speaking to your heart. You're unsaved or you're unchurched. If that's you today, I, I offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. He'll give you brand new life. New life abundantly. Oh, come. The day you hear my voice, he says, harden not your, your heart. Is there one? Is there one? I, I wouldn't wait. Tomorrow's not promised. The next second of breath that we breathe whew, is not promised. God, we're grateful and we thank you. Whew, thank you because you've been good to us, Lord. Thank you for the challenge that you challenged the church with to be the church. To actually do the ministry that you've assigned our hands to do. That we might be instrumental in building the kingdom. It's good to have a nice building and a nice location. It's even good, Lord, to have a, a house full of people. But, Lord, we know that you desire souls. Souls that are unsaved. Souls that don't know you in the parting of their sin. I mean, after all, you, you said you didn't come for the saved. You came for the unsaved. So, God, we thank you for the mandate, the mission that you have given the church. And Lord, we, we promise that we will do deliberate ministry in this new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen.
Amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. Amen. 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 Um, all right, all of, the, all of the young folks, I guess we baptized today. We're going to give you all the right hand of fellowship. Um, we have one or two more members. I don't see them here that uh, have joined and have completed new members class. Um, and we want to give them the right hand of fellowship as well. Thank you. Amen. All right, so y'all come on up. We're going to come on up. Oh, here, here, right, here, right. Let them sleep. Let them sleep. Let them sleep. Hey, man, come on, stand up here. Yeah, I'm going to get Jordan the right hand of fellowship again. <laughs> amen, amen. Look at these young folks. Amen, amen. Amen. Um, we got more. We got more. They got to complete the new members class. Amen. But after that, um, we will offer them the opportunity to become full members of St. John's uh, brothers, sister. Amen. Thank God for your presence. Thank God for allowing the Lord to speak to your heart and become a member here at St. John's. We receive you in the same spirit in which you've come, and we welcome you. We welcome you uh, here in the name of Jesus Christ. And today I'm going to offer you the right hand of fellowship where you will have all rights and privileges as members of the church, just as the adults to work. Amen. Just, just as any adult to sacrifice. Amen. Just like all of us are required to do to uh, help to upbuild the kingdom of God. So we welcome you, and we thank you for coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise in this place today. Amen. Amen. Preacher, why you baptize children? Um, I'm gonna say this the say this the because they have acknowledged a relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't believe like some of our brothers and sisters that um, baptism covers them. Are y'all with me here? Because baptism is uh, not a sacrament. But baptism is an ordinance. An ordinance is a command given by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we ought to do. And so when children are at an age where they can acknowledge their relationship with Jesus Christ, there's the water. What stops us from allowing them to be baptized? Amen. Amen. So, so just so y'all know, uh, the children are not arbitrarily thrown in the water. Amen. Amen. Can I testify? My nephew, who has autism, told me that he knows that the Lord loves him. I, 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 I need to, I, you, you, listen, brothers and sisters, I, I need for you to know that the Lord works with anybody in any state that they might be in. I, I wish I just I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you since since he's been I've seen just the growth and you know y'all I've got the mic now and it's a poor fraud that won't praise his own pond um and I've seen do you, do you notice do you notice when when people are going through or dealing with he operates in the role of a of a nurse he'll, he'll come and bring tissue and give comfort Are, are y'all, are y'all? All right. Has everybody served, been served that desires to be served? Everyone? We have uh, two, two, oh, we got a couple folks. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. There's some folks on, on that side. Thank you, sir. Folks on, on, on the left, on your left. Okay. Thank you.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As they sat at the table, Jesus took the bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it, said, This is my body, broken for many. Take it. Eat all of it. After they ate together, he took the wine and said, this is my blood, which is shed for many. Take it, drink ye all of it. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, let every heart say, amen. The highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest Gives me strength. That gives me strength. Amen. After you've given your cup in, would you just stand? From day to day. Brothers and sisters, uh, as you know, our giving is done on the way out the door. If you desire to give, the ways of giving electronically will be on the screen. Otherwise, if you have a tangible gift in your hand, you can certainly give it to one of our trustees who will be at our, at our exits. Thank you for coming out today. And don't forget, y'all, help wanted, ministry needed. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. God, we're grateful and thankful for this day. We thank you for how you have blessed us. God, we pray that when we leave this place, we will never leave your presence. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let every heart say amen, amen, and thank God.